Hello boys and girls, Mrs. C here, out in the field across from my house. And this is not a field like we would see at school in any way. This isn't a field of solid grass that's really flat at all. If you notice, there's sagebrush, there's dirt, there's big boulders, there's little rocks, there's hills, there's some flat areas. It's just a very unique kind of field. And this kind of field is where we would normally find a cottontail in its natural environment. And a cottontail rabbit likes this area for a lot of different reasons. One of those reasons is that it would be pretty easy to hide in something like this, don't you think? Because in a field of solid grass, a rabbit would kind of have to be green to just blend in and be hidden. But here, they can hide behind things and in things, and we'd never really see it unless it jumped out at us. The second reason the cottontails like to live out here is because there's lots of food for them. Stuff that we wouldn't typically think would be yummy to eat, like these tall weeds and things, the cottontails probably would enjoy for a snack. And then the third reason the cottontails like to live out here is because there's lots of space for them. They can build their burrows in the ground and they can spread out and they can hunt and find food and bring it back and it's just a nice environment for them to have their families and be able to have lots of room. So I brought my own little helpers out here with me to look for, say hi, Hi. to look for some cottontail rabbits. And you'll notice they're kind of blending in themselves. They're like little camouflage. Wave over there. Oh, there they are. So we were actually just kind of digging around looking for cottontails and we haven't seen any yet. But we're going to keep our quest up. And in the meantime, we're going to go back to our house where Hannah my oldest, remember, has three bunnies of her own. And we're going to talk about some of the things that are unique on their bodies that make it ideal for them to live out here in this type of field. So we'll see you in just a bit. All right, we're back. And we didn't find a wild cottontail, so we came in and got one of Hannah's pet rabbits. And this isn't a cottontail like you would see out in the wild. This is actually a Holland Lop. And you can tell it's a lop because look at these. What are those ears doing, Hannah? They um, lop because of the crown on the head. Right, so they don't stand straight up. Does a normal cottontail rabbit's ears stand straight up, Hannah? Yeah. They, they do. do. And that's one of the adaptations that they have. And the reason that they have their ears like that is why? Do you remember? It's so the rabbit will be able to hear, so like if a coyote. So out there in the field that you just saw, there's a lot of grass and twigs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if the so you like what she's doing. So if the coyote will come and step on a branch, then the rabbit will be able to hear it and be able to go hide. Got it. All right. And she's also got something unique in her mouth. Can you show us what's in her mouth? Can I, I show her, her what's in her mouth? Can I show her what's in her mouth? Can See, I? so Emily's going to help me. Emily, show her teeth. Ooh, nifty. And those are some big chompers. Why are the rabbit's teeth so big? I don't What do you think? Do you know? Uh, they are because, so if the rabbit will eat hard food, like <laughs> if they want to eat a stick or something, then they're able to chew through it. Okay, got it. And, oh, hello. <laughs> and one last adaptation I wanted to show was the back legs of a rabbit. Let me show Scarlett's back legs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna point at them. Okay, you point at them, Emily. See, so they oh. get really, really long. They get long, and look how big they are. This is Mrs. C's hand, and look <gasps> at this rabbit's feet. They are not small by any means. But they're big. They are very big, and do you know why they're so big? Mm -mm. Why are they so big, Hannah? They are big, so the rabbit is able to hop. Right, so if a predator comes, those big, powerful back legs are going to make sure that Scarlet can hop away super duper fast and get away from that predator and get back to her burrow to save her family. So the only last thing I wanted to talk about was the coloring. Now Scarlet is what's called a black tortoise. And so that means that she's kind of a dark color. And Holland Lops come in lots of different colors. Well, cottontails are amazing because they can do something called camouflage. And we sort of talked about that earlier in the year where you blend into your environment. And what a cottontail will do is they'll go from a solid white color in the winter when there's lots of snow to a darker brown color in the fall and spring and seasons like that where they can blend into the dirt and the things around them. Now Scarlett, she doesn't 
change color. You can tell that her hair changes a little bit. That's called molting. So that's where she sheds and she loses some of her old fur and gets some new fur, but she'll never really change to a different color. But what's neat about a cottontail is that they can do that and it keeps them safe from predators. So those big giant feet, those big giant teeth, and that fur change in color, those are just a couple of the really cool adaptations that rabbits have made to live in the wild.